What's up everybody, this is Ultima I Device Vids, and in this video we're going to be doing a speed test between two iPhone 8s. One is running iOS 12, which is one of the earliest iOS versions the iPhone 8 ever supported, and the other iPhone 8 is running iOS 16, which is the latest iOS version. So with this video, I want to see how the performance of the iPhone 8 has held up over time after several years of major iOS updates. It's honestly kind of crazy to think that the iPhone 8 is already on its sixth major iOS version with iOS 16. iOS 12, on the other hand, is only the iPhone 8's second major iOS version that it ever ran. So, with the iPhone 8 being the oldest iPhone that still supports the latest iOS version at the moment, I want to see how this phone performs on one of its first iOS versions in comparison to its latest iOS version. So, we're going to test out launching some stock applications, we're also going to launch some App Store applications, we'll test Touch ID on locking, and we'll load some web pages in Safari. Now in terms of the App Store applications that we're going to be using in this video, the versions of these App Store apps on the iOS 12 iPhone 8 are the versions of these apps from the time that this version of iOS 12 was the latest iOS version. This iPhone 8 is running iOS 12.1.4 by the way. iOS 12.1.4 was released in February 2019, so I actually installed the versions of these seven apps that were the latest versions of these apps in February 2019. My goal with this device was to recreate an iPhone 8 pulled straight from the late 2018, early 2019 era, when iOS 12 was the latest iOS version. So in addition to having this iPhone 8 on this old iOS 12 version, we're also going to be using the old versions of these App Store apps from that time period. And of course on the iOS 16 iPhone 8, which is on the right, it's running the latest iOS version at the time I'm recording recording this video being iOS 16.4.1 and it's running the latest versions of all these App Store apps. And I also wanted to quickly show you that both devices are running at their peak performance capability in regards to their battery health. And before we jump into the test, I just want to take a moment to thank CaseKu for sponsoring this video. CaseKu's Magic Stand cases are different than traditional phone cases as they feature an invisible stand that allows you to stand your phone up horizontally or vertically with ease. The invisible the visible stand is quite sturdy and easily adjustable, and with the strong N52 magnet on the back, MagSafe accessories will firmly attach to the back of the case. The transparent back of CaseKu's clear magic stand case is made of Kryze gel, which is a material exclusively developed by CaseKu that reduces the molecular gap of the TPU, effectively strengthening the internal structure of the case, and compressing the breeding space of bacteria which prevents the clear magic stand case from yellowing over time. Case Case also supports Klarna as an official payment method, which allows you to try Case Coo's products with the flexibility of Klarna's payment options. If you're interested in checking out Case Coo's Magic Stand case, you can use the code ULTIMATEIDEVICEVIDS for 10% off. I'll leave a link to the product in the video description. So let's get started by launching up some stock default iOS applications. Now as to be expected, with super lightweight, simple applications like this on any semi-modern iPhone, regardless of the iOS version, Version, applications like this are going to load up very quickly. I think it's safe to say we've gotten to a point over the past seven years or so where the launch time of simple applications like this have pretty much peaked, and you're not really going to notice any lag on semi-modern hardware and software. You can attribute this to Apple's A-series chips getting more and more powerful each year in combination with Apple's software optimization. We're basically at a point where Apple's hardware is powerful enough that several years of iOS updates won't impact the launch launch times of simple apps like this for the most part. A few of these stock applications opened up quicker on iOS 12, and a few of them opened up quicker on iOS 16, but for the most part, any difference in launch time between these two iOS versions is something that you'd probably never really notice in day-to-day -day life, unless you're comparing them side by side like we're doing in this video. It's also worth noting that in the four years between these two iOS versions, a lot of these apps have been completely changed and redesigned, so a lot of them are basically completely different applications at this point in time, just due to how much they've changed. But at the end of the day, as expected, not a huge difference here. I also ran a consecutive app launching test for the stock apps, launching the same set of applications on both iPhone 8s side by side, consecutively one after the next, and yet again, very similar performance. Now, the iOS 12 iPhone 8 was consistently a few seconds ahead of the iOS 16 iPhone 8, and as we progress through this set of applications, you can see the difference does 
start to widen as we go along just by a little bit. Towards the end of switching between this set of apps, the max difference in time between the iOS 12 iPhone 8 and the iOS 16 iPhone 8 was around five to seven seconds. So again, something you'd probably never notice in a day-to-day -day life. And next, let's move on to launching up some App Store applications. Now, as I mentioned earlier, on the iOS 12 iPhone 8, the versions of these apps are the versions from the time that this version of iOS 12 was the latest iOS version. And of course, the iOS 16 iPhone 8 is running all the latest versions of these apps, as iOS 16 is the latest iOS version right now. So again, this is basically an iPhone 8 pulled straight from four years ago versus an iPhone 8 from today compared side by side. So kicking things off here, yet again, a very minor difference in the grand scheme of things for most of these applications. Although the iOS 12 iPhone 8 with the iOS 12 era apps is a tiny bit ahead for all of these, except for Google Maps here, which opened up at the exact same time on both, and Spotify, which opened up slower on iOS 12, interestingly enough, as you could see right here. I'm not sure exactly what caused this. Maybe something server side about about launching up this very old version of Spotify so many years later causes this delay. I actually relaunched the Spotify application again on both, and the second time, the iOS 16 app was faster yet again, but not by quite as much. But anyways, moving on to some other apps now. And for those curious, most likely the reason the iOS 12 device consistently loaded these applications quicker than the iOS 16 device is the fact that these applications were probably simpler four years ago than they are today, with less features and less overall complexity. In terms of the iOS version on the device having an impact on the speed and performance of the device, honestly, it's hard to tell, because once again, all the apps on the iOS 12 iPhone 8 here are several years old. But what I can say is, if you find yourself thinking your iPhone felt faster when you bought it several years ago versus the way it is now, chances are that's probably true, as you're seeing. Of course, that's not always the case. There are some instances where the newer apps on the newer iOS opened up faster. We saw more of that happening with these stock applications rather than these App Store applications though. And we're also gonna do a consecutive app launching test for the App Store applications as well. And the iOS 12 iPhone 8 with the iOS 12 era apps is quicker than the iOS 16 iPhone 8 with the iOS 16 era apps for the App Store consecutive app launching test as well. As you saw earlier in the test, there was definitely a less noticeable difference for the stock applications, but with these App Store applications, the iOS 12 device is more noticeably snappier, just in terms of getting into these applications quickly. Again, a very minor difference in the grand scheme of things that you probably wouldn't even notice in day-to-day -day life, but it is there. And of course, for these slightly heavier game applications, a bigger difference is going to show there. But in any case, though, very solid performance for a six-year-old device on both iOS versions. Again, it's important to keep in mind, as much as we're analyzing the little details here, the overall performance of both devices are very comparable. Next up, we're going to unlock both using Touch ID, and literally no discernible difference here, both blazing fast. And next, we'll load a few web pages in Safari. We're going to load a few web pages on Google.com and a few web pages on Apple.com as well. And here, yet again, the difference in performance was extremely minor. This falls into that same category of something very simple and lightweight that won't yield any real difference in terms of speed between these two iOS versions. Now, now, as a result of the old version of Safari on iOS 12, some web pages don't load properly since they're designed for modern versions of Safari. But that's to be expected, as this is a four-year-old web browser at this point. And in terms of scrolling smoothness, fantastic on both, no visible difference here. And alright everybody, that just about wraps it up for this video. As I often say, I think it's pretty impressive that Apple provides major software updates to their iPhones for so long. And with this video, as you can see, they're also doing a great job maintaining speed and performance over all the years that they provide software update support. If any of you use an iPhone 8, let me know down below in the comment section how the speed and performance has been for you. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.